Pathpilot quick tips. Cycle counters. So sometimes you've got a G-code program making you parts, hopefully making you money, and uh, you, know, you, you run that a whole bunch of times throughout the day, and it's easy to lose track of how many times you've run it or how many parts you've made, especially in a lathe situation where maybe you've got some bar stock coming in with our automatic collet closer and bar puller and maybe even an tur uh, automatic turret uh, tool changer. Um, it's you know part parting off the bar stock and the bins full and you don't really know how many are in there, right? So this is where cycle counters can really excel. Um, Pathpilot has two of them. They're displayed by default right here. Um, there's ones that count M30s and ones that count M99s. Um, there's no difference between the A and the B counter. Um, there's just two counters and that gives you some flexibility. You could use the A counter for maybe how many parts you make during the day. Maybe the B counter is how many parts during the week. Um, kind of whatever you can think of to use them for. You have control over how to individually reset them. So you could reset the A counters, for example, every morning um, and let the Bs you know, kind of roll forward for the whole week. Um, they're very easy to manipulate. Um, if you go to the MDI line uh, and you type admin, we have a beautiful uh, autocomplete feature. And so there's all sorts of different settings that you can kind of optimize with Pathpilot, but these are cycle counters. So if you start typing the word cycle, we show you all the things you can do with those cycle counters. So you can show them, which is by default, if they really annoy you and you just want that space back, you can hide them. Uh, otherwise, you can reset all of them, just the M30 counters together, the M99s, or you know, really get into uh, the details on them. So if we want to reset just the M30A counter, for example, that we would do. I've got a program loaded up here. You can see it just moves X back and forth a little bit and then has an M30. So if I run that a couple times here, you see the M30 counter increments as we would expect, right? The nice part about these counters is that when you post a file out of your CAM program, you're gonna have an M30 in the, in the file already at the very end. And so you don't even need to edit the file at all to add this or to get this automatic counting feature. It's just there by default. Um, really works well when you have to edit your model a few times and you're reposting the file that you didn't forget to update and re-add the counter uh, kind of program. Um, in a lathe, you might use actually more an M99. And so in a case here, if we edit this program and I replace the M30 with an M99, when that's the last uh, line in a G-code program, it just loops back to the beginning and starts again. So it's kind of an endless loop where it'll just run until you come up to the machine and hit stop, right? So you load in a long bar into your uh, automatic collet closer, you hit cycle start, you know, you're monitoring it, but working with it, your mill on the other side of your workshop, and eventually you wander over, you see the parts counter, and you, you, know, you hit stop, right? Um, so if we load that up in here and hit go, <clears throat> you'll see the machine is busy making us money and the M99 counters ratcheting up, counting our number of parts. Um, so take a look at the parts counter. We think you're going to have a good time with it. Uh, if this isn't available in your version of Pathpilot, you're not running the latest version. It's been in there for quite a few years. Um, you might also notice this layout is different. It's in a, a portrait mode layout, uh, a new feature of version 2.10. Both of these features are in that. Check it out with a whole bunch of new features as well. Always available from Tormach.com for free. Um, give it an update today and enjoy.